we can edge up to the continuum via a limiting sequence of discrete experiments, much as we do in the calculus. We saw, for example, that by tossing a coin repeatedly in the limit, we engender a continuous space, the, un the unit interval. Now, one can imagine other experiments which don't quite so gratuitously posit equal mass everywhere. And this leads to a very general framework for experiments in the continuum. In all such cases, we can think of these experiments as arising as limiting sequences of discrete experiments. But it is frequently going to be the case that it is much simpler and easier to deal directly with the continuum. This process is much as we do in calculus, where we look at discrete approximations to sums, and in the limit, we end up with a Riemann integral. The student will come to no harm if she bears firmly in mind that all that is happening when we transition from a discrete experiment to a continuous experiment is that discrete probability masses segue into mass densities where you have mass per unit length spread over a region and that sums segue naturally into the appropriate intervals. All else carries through. Positivity, normalization, and most importantly, additivity. So let's launch directly into the setting where we have an abstract generic probability density function, for instance, like the one I've shown you. I've called this function p of x to connect it to the idea of the probability mass function. Recall, for a mass function, the argument was discrete, a set of integers. But now we're going to deal with a function of a real variable. The implicit sample space here is the continuum, the real line. p of x now is a function of x. If it is to constitute a bona fide density, what properties should it have? Well, naturally, it's a mass density, and therefore the function should be non-negative everywhere. It would make no sense to say that the mass density is negative at a certain point. We do not countenance negative probabilities. And it has to be properly normalized. What does normalization mean? In this case, that the limiting sum, the integral of the function, is unit. Another way of thinking about it is that the area under the curve is unit. Bear in mind here that your p of x connotes a mass density in units of probability mass per unit length. d of x multiplying it is an infinitesimal length. And when you have mass over length times length, we end up, in fact, exactly with mass. Any generic function, p of x, which is non-negative everywhere and has got unit area under the curve, constitutes a bona fide probability density for some chance experiment. Now, once you have a density, what kinds of chance experiment are we dealing with? Let's take stock. The underlying sample space is in fact a continuum. It is a real line. And in settings like this, tradition compels us to use a letter rather different from capital Omega. We use blackboard bold R to denote the real line. And of course, this just means all real numbers from minus infinity to plus infinity. We think of this as a limiting experiment. We think of this, for example, as connoting the amount of rainfall on a given day the rate of sunspot activity, the percentage of contaminants in a reservoir, and so on and so forth. All of these can be thought of as limiting discrete experiments giving rise to a continuous value. Here is our sample space. The sample points here are real numbers. I should, to adhere to our conventions, call it lower case omega. But Convention in this setting compels us to use letters like x to denote it. And so, by convention, we use uppercase letters, typically R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, to represent 
chance outcomes which are numerical. A generic such letter, of course, is uppercase X, and this will represent for us a generic outcome of a chance-driven experiment which gives rise to a continuum of possible values. Since we now are dealing with a numerical value, it is natural to call such a sample point a random variable. All right, so uppercase X is a generic random variable for a chance experiment described by the probability law which is induced from that density above you. What are the events of interest? Well, the basic events are naturally intervals. So an, inter an event A is in the form of an interval from A to B. Now, this is a subset of the real line. It's a bona fide event. But the context here of an experiment which gives rise to a real number adds color to the picture. And we can describe this event in notation graphically by saying this is the event which corresponds to all outcomes, random variables, which take values between A on the one hand and B on the other. And this kind of explicit writing out of the event is visually appealing, and of course it connects well with our intuition. We now want to assign a probability measure to this. Probabilities here are identified with areas. So we're interested in the probability of the interval from A to B, or more verbosely, the probability that a random variable, the outcome of a chance experiment, lies between A and B, and we simply identify it as the area under the curve from A to B of the density function. This is exactly the kind of process we went through with the uniform distribution. We can think of the integral on the right as a limiting Riemann sum by taking the interval and, as we did before, splitting it up into infinitesimal pieces, adding up the probability contributions from each interval in, into infinitesimal piece, which is, of course, the height of the rectangle, a tiny rectangle centered at that point. Add them up, go to the limit, you get an integral. Now, at this point, it's much easier to deal with the integral. What about more general events? Well, a more general event is obtained by taking various subsets of various intervals on the line and stitching them together like this. So now we're going to have basic events which engender more complex events by a process of unions, intersections, set differences, and so forth. Let's say A is one such generic event. I've shown it to you by three shaded areas under the curve. We are interested in the probability that your random variable, a chance outcome, lands in the set A. And how do we compute the probability? Simply by stitching together areas under the curve and appealing to additivity. The area under the curve of P of x in the region A is what we denote as the integral over A of P of x. And this exactly gives rise to the probability of interest. And all we've done here is we've taken a density with units of mass per unit length, multiplied by infinitesimal lengths, and added to get a total probability mass. Naturally, a question now is, at this level of abstraction, this is all well and good, but what kinds of functions represent densities in practice? What kinds of functions arise out of real chance experiments? We shall turn to this next.